Hello, this video will be a technical deep dive for the NBA Advanced Analytics and Machine Learning video. If you have not yet watched the first part, I suggest you start there. We will start with the NBA Talent Scraping job and see how it handles scraping challenges. We will look at the Talent Spark job that prepares data for machine learning and Spark SQL tables. And finally, we will take a closer look at the Databricks Python notebook and see how it helps analyzing and visualizing NBA stats. Our talent job starts here. This job is designed to make all the API calls required for a given team and season. It's also sometimes called scraping. First call will fetch a list of games for the given team and season based on parameters. There are a few challenges this job needs to overcome. First, we want to avoid repeating the same calls twice by using a cache. Second, handle the API responses which contain multiple different CSV structures. Here you can see I have made a call for a specific game ID and the response has essentially two different datasets with two different headers. The first is for players, followed by the CSV. Then we have a header for teams followed by another CSV. The job needs to be able to determine that automatically with these lines of code and then save the file with the right name, either players or teams. To save time and to make sure we never fetch the same game twice, we keep a file with all the game IDs we've collected. This way the process will always be resumable and will fetch only new games. The third job will run on the Databricks cluster and is responsible to join and prepare the data. Let's take a look on what is the difference between preparing data for SQL and machine learning. What is feature creation? and how we can create Spark SQL tables in a talent job. If you want to know how to configure your Spark job to run on a Databricks cluster, please check my Databricks technical tutorial video. This flow creates datasets differently for machine learning and Spark SQL. In some cases I am writing the data as Parquet, while in the other, depending on the way I will use it later in Python, I prefer to write it as CSV. For SQL tables, I can use any type of data, while for machine learning, I would prefer writing only data that can be used as features for the algorithm. So things like game, dates, and team ID might not be relevant. Machine learning data will usually include only doubles or floats, and not strings, so I have to convert the types. One common advice machine learning experts have for beginners is focus on feature engineering and creation. There are two ways to create new features that are not part of your dataset. Use external data, in this case maybe how many people attended a game, if you think that's relevant, or calculate features based on your data, for example how many rest days did the team have before the game, or how many minutes a specific player played in the past week. I use this job to calculate the days of rest for the team for each game. Make sure, when using parameters in Spark, to properly sort and partition the data first. Here we can create Spark SQL tables with the JDBC connection to Databricks. When we are using Parquet, we don't have to specify the table schema. Now let's take a look at how to trigger a Databricks notebook with parameters from a talent job. In Databricks, create a new job, select the notebook you want to run, choose a cluster to run on, either an existing cluster or choose to create a new cluster for each execution. Back in the talent job, we will create a fixed input with this JSON string it will include the job ID and later the parameters I would want to pass, in this case, team and season. In the REST request component, in the advanced settings, I will have to put my Databricks token in the following way. Back in my Databricks notebook, I can use the parameters pushed from the talent job in the following way. Let's take a closer look at the Python notebook that was triggered. Now I have to say, I'm not a data scientist and I don't write Python code for a living, but I think you'll find that using a Python notebook provides for a very comfortable environment to ramp up and get started with machine learning. I'll speak briefly about feature selection using recursive feature elimination, Databricks Delta Spark tables, and model evaluation. My goal was to find which stats influence the game result the most. That means I need to find which features work best for this prediction model. One method of feature selection is backward selection. I use a library called recursive feature elimination. 
It will start by evaluating the model with all of the features, score them and reduce the least important feature each time while ranking them. The result will be a list of all my features, in this case stats, ranked by their importance order. And here I can just pick the top 5 or 6 for each team. Next I take the top 6 features chosen and use k-fold model validation to evaluate the model more carefully. The result is a score that gives me an indication how good these 6 features that I chose are for this prediction. Now I save my results for the specific team in a Spark table. Usually in Hive and Spark it's not so common to use update queries. However, I'm using Delta tables which are a next generation engine built on top of Spark and are optimized for ACID transactions. Let's explain the results. The automated run completed the experiment for a specific team, in this case Washington, in 2017-18. They played 82 games and won 52% of them. The RFE found that the stats that help predict the wins the most are these six stats and the k-fold model validation evaluated that these six stats can predict the game results with 89% accuracy. Similarly, I ran the entire job on different teams and you can see the results in the table below. Now I want to generalize the results achieved for specific teams and come up with stats for all teams together. Here I will take more of a manual approach. It helps that I can visualize the results I have so far and see which stats repeat for different teams the most. After using backward selection and k-fold validation on all of the data, I can see that six stats, points, free throws attempted, rebounds, turnovers, steals, and field goals attempted can predict the games with 84.9% accuracy over these 3,431 games. If I use all 33 stats I have, I can go up to 85.7% accuracy, which is not that different. But these six are the most important stats according to this. If I remove one of them, I get a big drop off in the accuracy. For example, removing points from the model will reduce the accuracy to 71.3%. The other notebook that was triggered conducted a similar experiment for specific players and you can see some of the results here. For example, for LeBron, it's three points made and assists while for Joel Embiid, it's minutes played. Finally, my talent job created some tables with teams and players data. I use these tables in a separate dashboard to visualize SQL queries. Here I can query whatever question comes to my mind. For example, who takes the most threes in Houston versus who runs the longest distance during a game? So basically you can use this dashboard to build whatever you would like to see. Thank you for watching, see you next time.